Hello everyone, today I'm going to walk you through my attempt to classify U.S. Supreme Court opinions uh, using different natural language processing techniques. Uh, there's a lot of utility in, in, in attempting to build a model that can accurately classify court opinions into uh, different areas of law. Every year thousands of court opinions are published, um, you know, not just at the Supreme Court but at the, at the circuit courts and the, the district courts and the various state courts. Um, and historically what's happened is that you have legal research companies that you know employ attorneys and analysts that manually analyze and categorize each each opinion as it comes out um, if we can automate this process it should hopefully dramatically lower costs so my process for this project involved um, first of all we obtained around 8,000 uh, Supreme Court cases or opinions for you know the full text of opinions for 8,000 Supreme Court cases um, I added labels to them so that each case was categorized into an area of law. There were like 13 categories. Um, we'll see them in detail in a bit, but you know, like criminal law, contract law, interstate commerce, etc. Uh, then we tried to see if um, various NLP algorithms could accurately classify the opinions into the correct category. Um, I also uh, was curious and I tried to use unsupervised learning to see if I could sort of recreate these topics using unsupervised models and whether they could generate representations that would align with those categories. Um, so let's take a look at the label distribution. Um, criminal procedure appears to be the kind of case the Supreme Court hears most often, which makes sense because um, you know it's a lot of what they do is, is you know litigate cases that the Constitution is involved in and since the Constitution has you know the, the Bill of Rights which has a lot of it's 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 the it's the root of a lot of criminal procedure with you know no searches without warrants and arrests and all that stuff um, so it makes sense that they would hear a lot of those uh, there's a lot of cases for economic activity also again makes sense civil rights ju judicial power first amendment due process again these are all constitutional questions so it makes sense that these would be um, you know some of this that the labels would be distributed in this way and in the interstate relations we see is is very few cases attorneys is very few cases because again Interstate relations is when, you know, cases are suing each other, and that rarely happens. Let's see. Um, so in order to minimize the noise uh, and improve model performance, what I decided to do was narrow the opinions down and sort of call a lot of, you know, garbage data that wouldn't really help building a classifier. Um, I, I charted out the lengths of the opinions, you know, by number of characters, uh, and the vast majority of them are, are, are under 100,000 characters long. Um, but then you see a spike of, of um, you know, really right near the end of like less than, you know, 2,000 characters. There's a bunch here. Um, and I had a sneaking suspicion that um, they're like one-liners dismissals. We only kept opinions that were greater than 5,000 characters because a lot of those would be those kinds. And then we kept all the opinions less than 85,000 characters to sort of take out the super, super, super long ones, which would have, you know, slowed things down and maybe affected performance. Um, we also filtered out dissents because for our purposes, since we're only trying to classify them into areas of law, it doesn't really matter about the dissents. This left us with 6,329 opinions to use um, to train our model. Um, so then the other thing I wanted to see was do LDA components capture existing label clusters? LDA is an unsupervised learning algorithm that seeks to develop mathematical representations of clusters inside the corpus of data that you had. I wanted to see if the LDA algorithm could sort of develop a mathematical, recreate a mathematical representation of the categories that existed in our data set. Um, basically see, could it come up with like, the categories that LDA came up with, did they align with the labels that were already in our data set? And we see that in some cases, uh, some of the components that LDA created, they did seem to align strongly with the given category. So like the very first one, we see that, you know, this component, um, most of the cases in, for this component were criminal process. So we can see that this component is capturing criminal process. And then here we see, you know, this seems to be capturing a lot of judicial uh, cases. This one seems to be capturing a lot of union cases. Uh, but then we do have some where there's, the distribution is too wide um, and it's not, you know, specific to one category enough for us to say that this component aligns correctly with one category. But it was still, it was still able to sort of, you know, find the seams and the data to sort of, you know, capture the essence of the category um, much to, to a much greater degree than what we would get were we to randomly assign categories. So now I want to look at what the most common words are in the corpus that are not like 
the standard English stop words like and and the etc. Um, and we see about what we would expect that the word court is the most commonly occurring word then state, states, act, that makes sense, you know, they talk about the act of 1970 whatever case, united, federal law, these are all terms that, that are what we would expect to find to occur very frequently in, in Supreme Court texts um, and one reason why it's important to sort of uh, identify these really common words is that when we get to modeling, we're going to remove these, these higher occurring words to see if that's going to improve our performance at all. Okay, so now let's take a look at the performance of the different classification to models that I trained. The best performance that I got was with support vector machines. Uh, trained on TFIDF with um, English stop words removed. So we removed and and the and uh. Um, that did better than removing English as well as the most common words in the body of the text. We got a recall of 0 0.8 which is a which is a very good score um, and the accuracy is also about 0 0.8 so basically 80 percent of the time the label that we predicted for a document was in fact the label that should have been applied to it. Uh, so now our recommendations uh, for this project and future work. Um, first of all, I think we could do more training data. I think that our neural network could have performed better if we had more data to train it on. I think to do that we could get cases from other courts and jurisdictions. Um, I think that we could try using uh, more advanced um, word vectors that are available, the pre-trained vector weights that are out there like BERT. Um, and I also think it would be interesting to try to predict other targets, like maybe try to use NLP to um, f uh, calculate or just create a model that can understand a, a judge's ideological leanings and how they're going to vote. And I think that could be worthwhile and it has a lot of value for litigation if you could sort of get, a, get an idea of how a given judge is going to vote on a matter. So um, thank you, and I hope that you like that presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.